three. This meeting is being recorded. Ha! Ah, that's so fun. Look at all of that. 70. You know, they. I was just going to do a Zoom meeting and they told me I had to get a Do a lunch. They told me Zoom webinar because the, you know, the numbers. Look at how many people. It's amazing. Wow. This is amazing. Should we start? Sure. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the book launch of The Street Belongs to Us. Uh, I am really honored. My name is, is Marta Chavez. I am a comedian in Canada, and, um, and I'm really honored that Carlene asked me to be the moderator of, uh, of this book launch. Um, the, the book launch is sponsored by the Trent University and the just a second, and the another story bookstore in Toronto. By the way, if you want to buy the book, which I highly recommend, then summer is coming and you have to be reading a lot. If you want to buy the book, the the store the another story book in Toronto have a lot of copies and they would like you to order them because they have also been going fast. Carlene is going to be signing some of them if you want an autograph by a celebrity. And uh, I am telling you in my books, she is a celebrity writer. Uh, please tell her, go to her website and order them. And then they are open for curbside pickup because we are, this is during the plague. You know, we're still in the masked up plague. And um, that's, uh, that, that's it, what I have to do as a housekeeping announcement. Now the, the, the author is gonna be reading some excer excerpts. Sorry, I am not hooked on phonics. The, uh, <laughs> Carlene is going to be reading from her book. And uh, we also going to meet the illustrator, which uh, you know, is a, is, is a great book uh, with, with these beautiful, humorous illustrations that are, uh, are great because I love to see books with pictures. I am like one of those middle school readers. So without further ado, give it up for Carolyn Pendleton Jimenez. Thank, thank you so much, Martha. Um, I just think, thanks everybody for coming. Like I see people from Japan, Australia, Peterborough, all over the uh, California. Anyway, it's pretty exciting to bring everyone together. It's got to be some advantage of this whole COVID mess. And one thing is the way it's brought us together. Uh, I'd like to start out, I have a few acknowledgements. I'll start off with an acknowledgement of the land. Toronto has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron, Wendat, and Petun First Nation, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was a subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. And one of the other reasons I read that is because um, I think uh, coming to Canada and learning from First Nations people and, and other scholars here really got me thinking about land in a way that I never did in California. And I think even the book is possible because uh, of that help, like that focus, because the kids, this is a, a book about the celebration of the land by the kids. And um, and I learned that here. Uh, what else do I wanna say? I, I need to do other acknowledgements, I think. Okay, wait, let me just thank, I wanna thank Arsenal Pulp Press, particularly uh, Shira Rose Wolinski, a uh, former editor there who made this, helped me make this a much better book. Brian Lamb, uh, who's uh, I think here tonight on uh, somewhere out there in, in virtual land. Uh, I wanna thank Andrew from, uh, from another story and Jaden and Sinara from Arsenal Pope. Who else? Martha Chavez uh, for, because you know what? My stepdaughter always said, how come you don't know her? She's another Latino lesbian in Toronto. How come you don't know her? Because of course we know all. <laughs> and then I have always wanted to meet you. And then and then Farzana doctor said, you can call her and, and have her with you. And I was like, oh my God, of course. <laughs> Thank you. It's an, it's an honor, Carleen. It is a real honor. And also, I've been reading you, and uh, I don't have the other books, 
but I've been reading about the other books and I am really interested and you have a fan in me. It is, uh, it is really an honor also that you're a fellow Latina and uh, I am excited that you are disseminating your knowledge and your wit mm -hmm. and your words with all of these folks. Thanks, Martha. And I like I think there's a bunch of Chicanas down there in the States right now that are getting to meet you. So I'm, I'm happy because Martha's a great, famous Cana Canadian comedian up here. Uh, what else? I don't know. Uh, I, I want to thank Rich for helping us with tech. And I want to thank my girlfriend and uh, for just everything. And and also there's tons of acknowledgments in the book. So I'm just going to leave it there because I'm not good with acknowledgments and I'll never get to reading the actual book. So I'm going to read you a couple of pieces and then we're going to move to a Q&A uh, with Martha and I and then um, and then we're going to open it up. So hey, but, but when we open up, Carleen, when we yeah. open up, we can't hear you folks. We can't hear you, but you can write your questions on the chat and uh, we will try to get all, all of them to 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 that you answer all of them uh, depending on time and also isn't Gabriella gonna be here? I think she's here. I think she's here somewhere. I'm hoping. Um, Gabriella, we'll find, <laughs> we'll find her. We'll find her. We'll find her when the time comes. <laughs> yeah. Martha's in charge, so she'll keep us going. She'll keep us on track. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> okay. Without further ado. Okay. This okay, is okay. the reading. All right. Here's the book. Wait. Let's see. This is a book. Anybody, you probably, yeah, I love. Beautiful. This beautiful. is Gabriela's work. Oh my God, it's so, so beautiful. I'm really happy about that. Um, okay, here's the prologue. It's 1984. I live at 3622 Muscatel Avenue where the wash makes a street bend. The wash is a big, deep cement stream that dribbles over algae. It is protected by a ch tall chain link fence and a strip of desert filled with prickly thorns. There are a few scrawny palm trees on our street, but mostly the sky around us is empty. When the smog lifts, you can see the radio towers all the way to the top of Mount Wilson. On the other side of the wash, about a hundred yards away is the freeway. There are so many cars on the freeway that you always hear a quiet hum like the sound of the air conditioning at the big pharmacy. There are so many cars on the freeway that the TV news guy says the exhaust is turning the rain into acid. He warns that it's eating away the steel that holds up the freeway itself. I think that's okay, because one day they'll cancel each other out. No more freeways and no more acid rain. They say we shouldn't drink it, but Wolf and I tilt our heads back and open our mouths when the drops start falling. We run away if my mom sees us and starts hollering to stop. She wears a dress and heels, so she can't keep up with us. We mm. sprint fast and breathe hard, and the smell of fresh mud pushes up into our noses. I'll be in trouble later, but it hardly ever runs. In, it, it, I'll be in trouble later, but it hardly ever rains in the San Gabriel Valley, so you don't want to miss your chance to taste a storm. There are small fences between the front yards in our neighborhood but nothing separates the yards from the street. Bushes, grass, and dirt bump into each other and make good hiding places. And the yards are perfect for Nerf football games. But you have to be careful because some drivers like to pretend that the bend on Muscatel Avenue is a racetrack. You have to stay out of the street. My cat Vaquero was killed by one of these race car drivers just two years ago. But that was before I turned 12, before Wolf and I wage our mud war, before the summer they tore up the street. Alex Richardson Salazar, Rosemead Califas Aslan, 1984. So kind of the idea for this book came from this one summer. They, they uh, the, as you hear from uh, the description of the street, people would go really fast. It's a dangerous street to be a kid or an animal. So mm -hmm. um, we were always really careful. And um, this one summer, they tore it up to put in sidewalks. So it was just this big muddy wonderland. And we had so much fun because the cars couldn't come and the concrete was off the land and we actually, you know, got to connect and enjoy. And, and, you know, even I asked my brothers lately about it and I said, do you remember that summer? 
And they both, the same thing, like big smiles. Oh yeah, that was great. That was the best summer. So I had this idea for this book and it had to be that summer. But my problem was it was hard to come up with plot. <laughs> so it was more of a poem, you know, at the beginning. And luckily a few years ago, it took me about 12 years to write, you know. And luckily a few years ago, um, I had this eight-year-old uh, kid read it named Jacinto. I don't know if he's here tonight, but uh, and he read it and and uh, the mom was really kind about my writing. And he said, you know what? Nothing, nothing happens in the story. And I was like, wow, damn, he's right. You know? And so then I got much better uh, because I yeah, so it happened. But I, I wanted to read one more excerpt. Can I read one more? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. I want to tell you uh, like a big part of this is this idea of the wash. And I didn't, not until I left Rosemary did I realize a wash was a weird thing because basically it's a big block cement thing. So they took all of our waterways and turned them into these big blocks of cement, which I never questioned until I left um, LA. And then I wondered why would they do that? Why would they, why would they turn all of our water and our nature into big cement blocks? Why did I grow up like that? You know, and uh, and then where I live now, there's they did the same thing. They well they don't have that, but they buried all the rivers here. So there's these memorials these golden memorials on the sidewalk Mem you know mm -hmm. memorializing the rivers that were buried so it's kind of like that I grew up next to like a, a ghost river okay I'm gonna read one more piece from this and then sure okay. sure the, read, uh, read all you want it's your <laughs> night Carlin it's your uh, night. the kids now so the kids are having I won't tell you what exactly is going on but they're they're having they're going on in the wash you're not supposed to go in the wash but they're, they're going in the wash and they're they're going at night through the wash. And the main character, Alex, falls, slips and falls into the algae, which is it's like totally disgusting. Okay. I'm lying flat on my back in the slime with water streaming through my pants and shirt. I sit up and look at my drenched body. Wolf starts giggling. I'm never gonna touch you again. I'm fully grossed out, but his giggling starts up my giggling. He unloops the rope from his belt and does his dodgers slide into the stream next to me, splashing any part of me that wasn't already wet. Ah, I yell, turning my head away from the spray. He jumps on me and we start wrestling, rolling on the concrete together. He pins me down and then I push with all my strength and knock him off me. I lie on top of him. I'm stronger than you, Wolf. Yeah, yeah, I know, he says, but only if you keep your training up. He nudges me and I move off him. We sit in the water together, looking at each other and laughing. My body is finally cooling down in the early morning desert air. You could have just told me you wanted to stop for a swim, Wolf jokes. Shut up. You should have seen yourself, full-fledged belly flop, he giggles some more. I laugh with him for a bit. Then I look down and see my left nipple poking up a little and my right nipple puffing way out under my wet shirt. Oh no, I exclaim and cover my chest quickly with my arms. Wolf pulls back, startled. What's wrong? My face goes red. Nothing. No, something's wrong, he says. That's embarrassing, I answer. More embarrassing than your belly flop? He asks incredulously. Yeah, I answer with certainty. Wow, he says. Tell me anyway. No way. Look, you should tell me, he insists. Why? Let's see, he says, holding up his fingers to count. Number one, I'm your best friend. Number two, I just told you why I threw the book at the principal. Number three, it's dark, and it's easier to tell things in the dark. Okay, I say, but don't laugh. Not a chance. I lower my arms and look down at my swollen chest. What? Look at them, I say. Look at what? Oh, come on, can't you see how big my chest has gotten? Oh, huh, I hadn't noticed. He, he says, staring more closely at me. I can see that one. He points at the right one. Jeez, don't point. Oh, sorry, <laughs> he says, lowering his finger. Hey, how come one's bigger than the other? I don't know. I didn't mean to make you mad, he says. I was just curious. I know, it's okay. I wish I knew more about what's happening to me. Well, it's probably fine, he says. They probably just grow when they're ready. I was reading about orangutan development during lactation, and they say that I'm not an orangutan wolf. Yeah, I know. 
but they're primates like us and there might be some facts that are helpful. He stops talking when he sees I have my hands over my face. Wolf, I don't know what I am, if I'm a girl or a boy or if I'll be a woman or a man or what. So, well, these are coming, I point to my chest and then I won't be able to hide them and I'll have to be a woman. That doesn't make sense, he says. We're animals. Some animals are boys or girls and some aren't and some change. It's not such a big deal. Like sea horses, when they wanna have babies, Wolf, it might not be a big deal to animals, but it is a big deal to people. Oh, yeah. You could be right, he nods. What am I going to do? Huh, I'm not very good with people, so I don't know what to say about them. He pauses to consider the situation. But I don't think a chest growing big automatically makes you a woman. It must be up to you. If you decide to be a guy, then... Your chest, whatever it looks like, will be a guy's chest because it's yours. And if you decide to be a woman, well, then logically, it's the opposite. Really? Yeah, I think so, he says. Scientifically, it would be impossible for someone outside of your body to know what your body feels like inside. You're the only one that would have access to that data. I could find a library in Long Beach and try to get some more material on it, though. Oh, yeah? I'd really like that, I say, standing up and brushing bits of leaves and dirt off my pants. He stands up beside me, walks, and walks over to grab his rope. He ties it around himself, and we continue on our trek. Wow, give it up. A round of applause <laughs> for Carlin. Give it up. Give, that's a very good passage. I love this. It's humorous, it's, uh, and it's also very tender. And uh, it makes me curious how much of the book is autobiographical? Is it based on your life or, or, or in your, that period of your life, pre prepubescent girl, boy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, like almost everything there is autobiographical, autobiographical. It's just put together in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. For sure, like, uh, I didn't even have friends that were girls until, um, high school actually I didn't know what girls were doing I didn't know what you did with them which no and you know and in fact I wish I did because they seemed like they were having maybe more fun than the boys but uh I just hung around with the pack of boys and I don't know why I always liked the kind of boys that were more wild and got in trouble and um and we just yeah we were just kind of boys together um but I mean I kind of knew I was a girl and kind of but kind of a boy at the same time and it was just mm -hmm. like I was some third third gender situation, but I didn't I didn't really know. Like I didn't know yeah, anything about gay stuff or anything like that, but I, the gender thing was always a deal. You you just knew that you didn't belong with this or with that. Yeah. And, well, I felt the same way, but I was I went to to an old girl Catholic school, so I was stuck. I didn't <laughs> know anything about boys, but I was considered tomboy in that kind of, uh, of setting. I, I identify a lot with what you say. Another thing that I love in the book that you didn't read about is the grandmother. The grandmother who, who has Alzheimer's because she's wise. She's very wise and, and uh, I don't know if I should mention it, but in one point of the book when, when, they, uh, when, they, when Wolf and, uh, and, the, and Alex started digging, the grandmother says, something I'm paraphrasing about not to dig because some things are better left uh, down, you know, on earth, on earth, you say? Yeah. Yeah, we say on earth. And I always like, like, for me, that was kind of like a metaphor for her memory, for her own memory. Did you set up to, to that or is just like I thought about that? Just that. Uh, I <laughs> You know, I, I uh, wanted to read a passage about my grandma too, but you know, it would be too long, which, and I know- uh, I didn't I'm want sure to... that they wanna hear it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that the people that are, that are there are there for you. Read it, read the passage oh, of the grandmother. Uh, it's I'm a not... character that- Oh no, but I don't know if I'm prepared to do that. Let me see. Oh, I, mm, let me just tell you about her. How about I tell you about her? Yeah, she, tell them about she, her. She was, she really stole the show. If there were two things yeah. in this book to begin with, it was the image of that street and my grandma. And uh, my grandma was a total character. Um, she, 
she came from Mexico when she was like three years old uh, during the revolution. And she um, uh, was with her mom and lived in San Francisco. And she, you know, I spent a lot of time with her and um, she just was nonstop stories. Does, does anybody have a grandma like that? You can put it in the chat. And they, they yes. just, it's like, you, you know, like when they turned TV into 24 seven TV and you could just listen to yeah. stories anytime. And most of her stories were about the revolution, even though she was like a really little girl. And, um, and they were often like about um, love and, and um, you know, heartbreak and tragedy. And um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I was just I with her and she would tell me everything. And, and she was interesting, right? Cause she grew up in Mission District in San Francisco and she dropped out of school when she was like uh, grade nine and she had started a family and all of that. She didn't come from any money, but she was really inventive, right? So she got her beauty certificate in Hollywood and then she made a board game and sold it to Parker Brothers. And then she did like, she had this very high voice. Uh, so she did like cartoon voiceovers in Spanish you know, like mm -hmm. they said she did Minnie Mouse, but I, you know. But, but this is your grandma, grandma, not Alex's grandma. But you base you. Alex's grandma in your grandma. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, like um, probably 90% of that is stuff she said and then uh, some of it's mm -hmm. only way. I love when you think when Alex tells the grandmother, when Alex reflects that, that the grandmother will tell a story, but Alex already knows her. <laughs> that, the story because I think all I, all children or at least all Latin children can identify with a listening story for your grandmother and you know it by heart yeah and you know the inflections and you know where she's going and you know when there is an addendum <laughs> to the story and that you're yes. saying bullshit bullshit but it's a, it's well, again I what? love your grandma you know what uh, my whole life she always said we left because of the revolution and and they, you know, she, her little sister died there and the cannonball went through and like, don't get me wrong. She said all of that. But when she was further along with Alzheimer's and then uh, the stories would change a bit, as you said, and one of the yeah. things that, that changed, you know, I'm picture she was in the town with Bancho Villa and all of that stuff. Right. And then one of the things that she changed at the end was, oh, I didn't, she goes, we didn't leave because of the revolution. We left because my father was a drunk. We had to get away wow. from him. And I was like. <laughs> oh. this is a new one maybe that was the true one and that, le, le, I wanted to ask you something else um, uh, Wolf is a fascinating character I can see him in my I can see him you know always wearing the same clothes and everything can you tell us about him is he based in a, in one of your the pack of boys that you've met in those yeah. uh, times I'd say yeah. the composite of about two or three boys and, and one in particular, yeah, he always wore, he wore army clothes every day and they always were trying to get him to stop. But I didn't really notice, I, I put in the book, like I didn't really know, he didn't really notice I had boys clothes. I didn't really notice they had army clothes every day and we didn't care. Um, but you know what, it's interesting writing this so many years later is it just made me wonder like what was going on with him? Why, why was he so angry and sad and and like I think it worked into like I think it's probably a good exploration of mental health stuff for kids um yeah that I only knew the stories I was only part of it but I didn't you know when you're a kid you don't necessarily go why are you doing that anyway you know like it just uh yeah now this is for like uh, this book is is uh, you have middle school children in mind yeah right and uh and uh I was wondering, do you think that is the message is universal? It can appeal to all to all children, regardless that you were Spanish in the in the book. You're a you're a Mexican American, and all of that. I, I would say that kids would I, many kids would identify. But what is your take? In that one. Well, I mean, I I, ho I hope so, you know, like they always say the universal is like the most specific. I try to be really specific. Like it's very LA 1984, Mexican-American, mixed race, Mexican and white, uh, the gender diversity stuff, but all kinds of kids are dealing with identity issues. All kid kids are doing dealing with puberty, you know? So, I mean, I hope there's something for 
for um, well, everybody. For everybody, yeah. But I will say, I like I have I have an eleven year old right now, which is not you know the age of these kids. Of course, I started writing it before um, she was born. But I don't know if you've been listening to the kids lately. And I'm not saying there's not still a lot of transphobia and homophobia and all of that. But they're they're shaking up gender like I've never. Oh seen. yeah. Now my yeah, kids, yeah. They're like, this is a gender. This is non-binary. This is, I'm a half demi girl. I'm this, and I'm like, wow. And it's not just a kid. Like I can understand. You grew up in my house. You might be, you know, shaken up on gender. I can see how that would happen. But it's not just my kid. It's like kids from all these conservative families too. And I think, oh, like I am so excited to have a middle grade book and maybe just be part of that conversation because I think they're they're really doing amazing things right now. Yeah, they are not. You learn a lot from the kids. You learn a lot from the kids. People keep complaining about about newer generations. I think it's because we are afraid. The older people, we are afraid that they know more than we do. But I think that you, that your book is also so charming and non didactic at all. But you can learn a lot, even when you are older than, than a middle uh, school child. I love that, I, li I, I really love that. And I was wondering also if, um, if, it, if it is related to your other work. Because I know I, uh, I, um, you say that it took you how many years, 11 years to write? Like, yeah, like, I don't know, like 12, something. I mean, Why? I was on Because and off, on and off. I think I needed to learn more about the world. I wasn't ready to write it yet. Yeah, but is, it, was it because it was it, you didn't want anything? You wanted to depart from the other books, or 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 uh, or it was just something that uh, because you have been talking about gender and the yeah. tomboy and all of that for years, according to to your bio. But I, I was wondering how how if if this would be like considered part of a trilogy, or yeah. or. Uh, <laughs> You know what I mean, girl? What I want is for people to buy all of the books, not only this. Awesome. <laughs> one uh, of them, like was, made, <laughs> well, one of them was made. One of them was made a movie. There's something for kids, something for grown-ups. I will say. Now, I did. I like my first book was a picture book called Are You a Boy or Girl, which I recently made a trilingual 20th anniversary version. Um, wow. that it, I've made free for everybody. And I mean, um, and then I made the film. I, I do think there is a progression because I did the book and then we did the film. And every time I would do more um, also, cause I work in education, I got to talk a lot with teachers and kids. And so mm -hmm. I just, it's it's been 20 years of like, you know, I had my own, own life where I learned all about this gender stuff, but then it's been 20 years of listening to people and uh, kind of, I don't know. I think it helped me make a, a better book, a, a book that wasn't didactic and that was about adventure and fun. Like I didn't want the gender stuff to be the main point of the book. I wanted it to be part of it, but you know. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, to ask you also that, uh, uh, but I'm, I, I answer to myself that because I wanted to ask you what makes this book a Canadian book, and then I I, I remember. It's about taking the streets of the pavement and in Toronto, <laughs> all of the streets are destroyed in order to build things. So this is a Canadian book by definition. <laughs> but do you feel, do you feel, Carly, do, Carlene, do you feel Canadian in the sense of, uh, like I know we are immigrants and everything, but I don't, I don't feel as a, as a let's say, a, a Latin from the United States feels. I feel quintessentially Canadian. How has Canada robbed on you a little? Like uh, I just wonder, you know, like I, I just wonder how uh, how do you? Because there are a lot more Latinos in the, in the United States. That's true. But I just wonder if uh, if um, if this is a Canadian book, you had it in mind for a Canadian audience. Um, well, I think I think uh, there's a lot of. I think that Canada collects a lot of writers who write about where they came from, you know, yeah. like uh, Shyam Salvadurai or Michael Andachi. You know, I think I think there's something about Canada that gives you the room to um, dream those stories again and 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 write them. Um, and so I, I don't know. Like I said, I think that the uh, the kind of relationships with the land and also the relationships between the Mexican and white characters. I think all of that 
um, was influenced by my time in Canada. I don't know how I feel like I, I moved here when I was 26. So uh, there's a part of me that always feels American. And then there's a part of me that feels Canadian. Um, yeah. As I'm here longer. I was happy to miss the whole Trump deal. That was all right. You know, that was that was good. I mean, yeah. not anybody in the world really missed it. But, you know, uh, I'm so uh, happy that he just vanished. We don't talk about him anymore. It's, it's like, he's like passe. But anyway, yeah. as a fellow Latin Canadian, I am glad that you are here. And I was on the, continuing with that, I wrote another question that, what kind, kind of message are you trying to make about discrimination? Well, I think there's a lot of different kinds of discrimination. I mean, you know, I, Partly, you know, in my uh, professor land studies, I think a lot about intersectionality. And so there's for sure that's part of this book. And I, I, I think about it being like, in this book, there's class warfare. There's, you know, there's like as much as my, gra as much as I adored my grandma and my grandma, like I think adored me, she was terrible to women and uh, she's terrible to my mother. And that's also part of the book. So, you know, it's about women's body issues. Um, there's, you know, stuff is thrown at one of the kids about, um, you know, that they keep calling him crazy. Um, like, so, and the way it hurts him, you know, and then there's the gender stuff and, and, and the racism stuff. So, like, I, I think that even though as I'm writing, I'm not thinking about doing that, I, I feel like, I, I feel like it's not didactic and that it's, Every time you think you've got it clear who's discriminate, where the discrimination, it's it's you can see it floating around, right? In the way mm -hmm. that I think it really works in the world. Um, but what I th what I thought was because the wolf wolf is white. Yeah. Right. Wolf is white. You're you're a, you're Latina, a Mexican American, and then you are together not because of race, but but because of social status. Yeah. Exactly. You are fighting against the man. I, we could I think so. Like I, where I grew up, it was probably like a uh, lower middle class and working class. And so, you know, w and it was very Mexican and very white. And, um, and we, so we were friends, you know, I mean, we were, there was racism too. It was terrible. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, and then it was more like the kids from more money or the North, you know, uh -huh. like that, that was where the ones that were like, Oh, you know, we're going to fight them. So it is more of a class battle if if i err on anything it's it's um uh you didn't err the book <laughs> is perfect <laughs> and by 1984 is there a particular reason why 1984 um i mean originally you know years ago when i was doing it that i was like guessing around the year that this um the street was torn up i'm not sure exactly but then also hey, you know, I'm not above the marketplace. And, you know, I talked uh, to my editor and stuff. And, you know, in the last couple of years, the 80s, I've become huge to the kids. Mm -hmm. So it kind of worked out, right, you know, and I've been watching uh, Stranger Things with my kid. And, you know, it's become very nostalgic to 80s. So I thought, hey, that's, they're interested in that. Might as well play that up a bit. That's my day, <laughs> the 80s. I had purple hair and I wanted to be Madonna. <laughs> We're Madonna. Oh, boy, this, Madonna this, wanted to be you. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, about the dad. Tell yeah. us more about the dad. So that was character. that was probably the hardest, um, the hardest piece to write. Uh, mm -hmm. In some ways, it's like my dad. In some ways, it's it's not like my dad um, was a part of my life, my whole my whole childhood, um, but. Um, there was a distance and so there's different ways you can be you can have a distance right psychologically geographically etc so i was trying to get at that um and i think you know because i don't want to spoil anything but i uh, let me just say you know what i went with because i kept thinking what's the dramatic ending what's the dramatic you know and i was thinking no like usually there's not a dramatic ending usually it's Mm -hmm. something you know you think yeah. you found the answer you don't really find the answer so I won't you know like I said I won't spoil it but you know they're searching and there's something there but 
maybe not what you imagine. So, you know, I wanted to leave it more, more mellow. So but, I'm not going to say anything because yeah, sometimes yeah. I put the food in my mouth. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you, hey, you know, you know what I loved? I love the illustrations. Where did you find the artist for the images? Artist, Gabriela, are you there? Yeah, let's see if we can Gabriela. find it. Do you see Gabriela Godoy on the purchase? No, no, I don't. I don't see Gabriela. Okay. Isn't it great that we have all of the, even Maya Chinchi is here. We have all of these oh, people no, on Zoom. Like uh, that's the good thing, like you said about the plague. You know that that we can have all of all of these people, but I it doesn't oh, there's, mean. Oh, there, there's Gabby. I see her. Sorry, Gabby. Gabriela, very tasteful. We can have yes. her come in. We can have uh, Rich. Can you? Bring Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So. Hi. Why don't you, why don't you tell them. Why don't you tell them where I found you, or, or where we? We found can you. see you, Gabriela. Put turn on your video. Ah, uh, let me. See. I want to see who made those beautiful illustrations. Oh my God, they're so I'm beautiful. I'm trying to find the camera. It's let's, easy. Let's it has see. a picture of a camera. <laughs> well, I just promoted well, to, to, to panelists, so she'll be in shortly as a panelist okay. and be able to see. Everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Mann. Well, you know what? You know, one thing back to the 11-year-olds, my kid told me two things. She said, like, like about three or four years ago when I was working on this, she said, Mama, you cannot have this book without pictures. Nobody will read it. And I was like, oh. yeah. And then I yeah. thought, how can I ask for pictures? Who would give me pictures? Would they let me have pictures? Can I have, you know, because, and then she's like, nobody will read it. So I was like, oh, okay. And then um, the other thing she told me, the other advice she gave is you can't have a book without a stuffed animal. So she made me put a stuffed animal in there. But anyway, so then... <laughs> Gabby and I have worked sure. on other projects, and that's how I, but go ahead, Gabby, tell them. Introduce yourself to Canada, Gabby, and, and to every, all, all of uh, the people, many people from everywhere here. Yes. <laughs> well, hi, thanks for having me. Um, I, I wanted to thank Carlene again, because I'm, I was a little late to this. I almost uh, missed the email um, when she sent me to be. Um, part of it and so it was a very last minute and I thought oh no I missed it <laughs> so thank you Carlene for sending the link um, so what was the question <laughs> now how did you two meet how did you I, I mean because the, the, oh, the, the, the designs are, I, are I, exquisite I'm a, I'm a storyboard artist um, that's what I've, I've been doing uh, most of my life and uh, I boarded for um, um, a friend. Uh, oh my goodness, her name! She's gonna kill me. Bar? I just talked to her today. Um, Barb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Barb. Don't worry. Yes, don't worry. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I did a board for her, and I believe that uh, Carlene also knows her, and she saw the boards and. Um, I think that's how it happened, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, congratulations. Gabby's like top of the line, like in the in the film industry. And so she did wow. storyboard for a film I was working on. So I got to see like a hundred pictures that she had drawn. And I thought, I love these pictures. These are perfect. But I didn't think I would get her because she's so fancy. And then I was like, I don't know. I'll just give it a try. <laughs> and then Lucky, she always wanted to do a kid's book. So I was like, oh my gosh, I got her. I got her. So, but you yes, have to say, is it is a kid's book, but it's also good for adults. It doesn't read complete. You know what I, you know what I mean? I, I love that, that, that uh, parents will enjoy it too. It's nothing, it's not that the parents are going to have the task. Oh, no, now I have to read with this kid. But uh, your designs are exquisite, Gabby. Very, very humorous, very tasty. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Tasteful, so much. I mean. Yes. Uh, another question, um, Carleen, I wanted to ask you about uh, if you have any influences from our Latin American side, let's say, because rather, who is your influence? 
like who you look up to, like your your mothers, let's say, <laughs> in, uh, in your literary mothers. My literary I always like mother. to. to uh huh. Oh, um, well, okay, the, the person, okay, look it. When I started university, I thought I'd be a math major because that's what boys did. They did math. Girls did literature. That's what I thought. So I couldn't do that. <laughs> but I didn't know that because I was dumb. <laughs> so anyway, and then I walked in at 17 to composition 1A, and it was uh, the, the author, Sheree Moraga, who was a- Oh, uh, Jerry, Sheree Moraga. Yeah, wow. yeah, who's a famous wow. writer in the States. And- I didn't know anything about gay stuff. I didn't know anything about anything, to be honest. And then uh, I just looked at her and I, she was amazing teacher, amazing writer. And I just was like, I, I, that's, I wanted, I want to be, I want to do what she's doing. I want to do that. And I didn't mm -hmm. even know it was gay writing or what. I just knew like I had to do that. So she was a huge influence. Um, uh, uh, you know, like when I, early on, Sandra Cisneros, uh, House on Mango Street was one of the early books. You know, mine is more of a, it's a flowing novel. Hers was more just a bunch of stories, but that was an early influence. And my, I had a really great um, supervisor, right, author, like another famous uh, uh, Chicana American um, a novelist, Cecil Pineda, um, who mm -hmm. really, Cecil, Cecile really you know what you know what she really helped with as well is she just thought in a way more international way like mm -hmm. like if she's writing you know she can be anywhere I just picture her like putting her boots on and walking across India or anywhere like she's she's maybe even shorter than me and she's a powerhouse and her her books always um just went all over the world like and her influences and so she really kind of opened that up, like, okay, uh, it's bigger than California, you know, like you can write about California, but let's, 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 let's go. expand. Yeah. Uh, now, are you planning ever to write a book about your adventures as, as a Canadian, as a Mexican American Canadian, like what you have encountered here and everything? Um, okay, wait, hold on. One more, Ru uh, Rudy Anaya is also a very famous Chicano author and he wrote Bless Me Ultima. And I think it did strike me because there's a huge important relationship between the kid and the grandma. And that was also mm -hmm. a model work. Um, I think my, I have written a book like that and that's how to get a girl pregnant. And that's for the mothers, not for the, or for the parents, I should say, and not for the kids. Did you get a girl pregnant? I I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah, I tried. I had a lot of practice, you know. But, uh, <laughs> that but you one, were that saying one really <laughs> covers you, a lot of that. You were saying that when you went to that when you it's my microphone. It went just a second. Just a second. We can hear you. You good? Now you can hear me. Yeah. Oh, so maybe it's, uh, it's picking up from the computer. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. No, you were saying that when you went to university, you didn't know about gays, you didn't know about anything. At uh, what, what age you came out? Uh, uh, pretty much as soon as I saw that, that teacher, Shri, you know, like somebody told me she was gay and then I thought to fight them because I thought it was a bad word. And uh, oh, wow. I was like, that's so wrong. Like, why, if a woman is smart, you're calling her that and... They're like, no, she writes poems about it. I was like, what? <laughs> so read, what? And then you went to read pretty, a poem? Pretty fast. The so lesbians said, found I'm... me, okay? I, oh. I thought I didn't look, I, I thought, I remember saying at the time, I don't think I look gay. And I think they just kind of laughed. And not that anyone looks gay, but apparently I kind of <laughs> look gay. And then they, um, <laughs> they found me. They found me pretty fast at Berkeley. You go to Berkeley, the lesbian, you know, hopefully the lesbians find you and and you get they find you right away <laughs> they would have found me and look i am a girly lipstick lesbo but, <laughs> but what's i gonna tell you uh carlene and um what else would you like the audience to know about the book about why should they buy you should buy this book you should buy it because i recommend it it's a very good read yeah and uh it's gonna it's gonna catch you like from the soul uh, which is like the best uh, when, when the, uh, this summer and we are in pandemic we have nothing to do we have to read there is so much Netflix that a person can watch you have to read to exercise your imagination 
And uh, <laughs> but tell us, tell us, tell us what else uh, would you like us to know about the book? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I I think you know when I've told people about it, I see <laughs> from all different ages or backgrounds, they kind of light up and they go, "Oh yeah, you know, I lived on a cul-de-sac or I lived in this place." And like. Uh, And I didn't realize, I thought, oh, this is this very specific place. But I feel like it brings alive, you know, wherever we had those adventures or needed to, like, grow, you know, needed to grow as that 11-year-old to have room um, to, yeah. to figure and yourself when, out. And in the book, Alex kind of, like, doesn't want to, doesn't want to grow up because uh, once that you grow up and you become a senorita, which is what the threat that they told me, you're going to grow up and become a senorita. <laughs> and, I, and I also didn't want to have boobs. And then I have like a humongous casuni. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, because I wanted to play with no shirt. And all of a sudden, I couldn't play with no shirt because my uncle said, go cover yourself. And I also, I, I mean, I shouldn't be talking about me. This is about you. But I also identify so much with Alex in that sense mm -hmm. that she, did, she just didn't want to grow because She didn't want to adapt to the mold of the senorita, yeah. right? Yeah. Were, but were you like that too? Like, is that ex experience? Did, did you experience that? Um, yeah, that, for, like for kind of, you know, but I feel like the senorita thing never just, it just never happened. Like the, the boobs happened because my family too, like, you know. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just, I just still, you know, um, was such a boy and. And my brother said at one point, he said, gave me advice. He said, just uh, get a pink sweater and it'll, you know, it'll be all right. <laughs> With so a I, pink sweater. I got a pink sweater, but it didn't, um, I don't know. <laughs> it was a really <laughs> nice pink sweater. It was fuzzy. I was in, you know, 1980s. I thought it would work. <laughs> yeah, you should have gotten Never. the bustier. That's what you should have gotten. <laughs> Madonna's bustier. <laughs> have you ever seen uh, um, Wolf again? The person that you based on, uh, or the boys that you based Wolf on? Um, I have not. I, Would I, they recognize I, I, themselves in the well, book? Of course. I, uh, I think he, I think, well, like I said, he's about three different people, but especially one of them, I think he would recognize himself, but um, I don't, I don't know. I've, of course I, you know, do my weird random Google searches in the middle of the night. <coughs> like everyone else. But he has a very common name. So, um, and actually his name is like a famous football player name too. So if you, you Google him. Uh, you Come know. on, say it. Just feel the beans. <laughs> Because you love to talk. Remember, well, before agreeing to the interview, I, I asked uh, Carleen, what can I ask and what I cannot ask? Because, you know, I don't have children. So so if they, some people ask me about my cats, I don't feel threatened that somebody may put my cats in danger because my cats would. <laughs> But um, you talk about your daughter and... Um, And, uh, and everything, and she knows that this is going on, your daughter, right? I think she, she said hi in the chat, so I think she's there, you can... She is watching, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but you, you like to talk, tell us, tell us a confession. Oh, please. I want to hear a confession. A confession, oh, yes. I, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think it's a confession, I just think it's, a, I just can't wait till COVID ends so she can go off and have her adventures again, you know? Because oh, yeah. uh, it just strikes me that this, you know, this book is so much about that age, and and, oh, yeah. uh, and this year has just so shut down people um, of that age. You know, the last thing they want to be doing is, is trapped in the house with their their parents. So, yeah, somebody on the, in the chat is saying that they want you to read a little bit more. No, 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 go buy the book. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> If she reads a little bit more, then you will buy the book. And what we want is to buy the book. Somebody yeah. wrote, do you have anything left to confess? Actually, I shouldn't say something. My my girlfriend wrote, do you have anything left? Which I think is clear. Yes. Do you have the Q&A too? Because there's a couple Q&A uh, questions. Uh, you, is you, anybody, a, a audience, are you, do you want to um, ask anything? Can you see, can you see the Q&A little panel? The Q&A? No. Down towards the bottom, it says, pause, stop recording, raise hand, Q&A. No? Maybe you can't see it. 
I can, I'll read. No, can read. I can, I, okay. I can read. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, go ahead. Um, so uh, Lisa is asking, uh, these pandemic days, it seems like giving our stories to kids is giving the best of what we have. Uh, can you say something about this book as a classroom or homeschooling resource? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I really, I, I think like my work is all with, with teachers, right? And so I think a lot about what might be a good resource in the classroom and what um, what you can actually have in there, <laughs> you know, like that I'm writing something that's not going to be banned. Um, um, but also, uh, some, you know, like I said, I want to enter into their conversation because I think that they are having such great gender conversations and I I, I feel like, and they're, and they're craving the, the eighties stories. Right. So in the same way that I really kind of lived on, I guess the curriculum of my grandma's stories. I mean, honestly, I still think about everything, like what her regrets were, you know, what her tragedies, what her heartbreak, why she immigrated. I still think of all of that. She gave me this whole curriculum of how to conduct my life or how to not conduct my life too. And um, so I, I just, you know, I find that in my stories too. I'm just, I don't even know again why I tell them sometimes. Sometimes other people have to tell me and sometimes my, my kid does. But I hope this is a book that, um, that the teachers will pick up for the kids in the classrooms. You know, um, it's real. Cool. Uh, another question from Corey is, uh, can you and your illustrator, Gabby, uh, talk about how you worked together? So how you actually you know, collaborated on this. Gabby, did you want to say sure. anything? Uh, yeah, so when Carleen sent me an email and I agreed to do it, and so then she, she followed up with some pictures um, of the uh, her family, just so that I would have an idea of uh, what it looked like. And um, I asked her to give me a description, just an, uh, just a few words of each character, what they, what they were like a little bit, right? So again, that I would have an idea. Um, for example, with the grandmother, at first I drew her much larger um, <laughs> than she is now in the book. So it was nice when she, so I drew a few, a few, yeah, a few different pictures and then she told me, oh no, she's actually quite petite. And I liked especially the Disney story that she had auditioned uh, for Snow White. So that right away uh, gave me just a, okay, I, you know, just I'm, I'm drawing and an, uh, 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 Snow White as, as an old lady. So um, that definitely helped. So, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, that's a famous story in our family. Um, that Does she, that uh, help? Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, uh, she auditioned for Snow White and she swore that they stole her likeness. And if you look at the 1930s version of Snow White, I didn't know the story for a long time, but I always looked at it and felt like I was kind of related to her, but I didn't know why. So I think they did steal it, but she lost the lawsuit, but apparently it's, it's a thing. <laughs> I, I like that story. <laughs> another question was from Natalie Gillis uh, was, why did it take you so long to write this story? Um, thanks, Natalie. Um, well, partly I, uh, you know, we're talking about the how to get a girl pregnant is I, I got pregnant. Uh, and I, um, and I start I was writing about that because as a butch dyke, trying to get pregnant, it was like, like, what, like weird adventures and stuff. And I just thought I got to write this down. And one of the things that happened was somebody gave me a contract to write that book. So when you have a contract, you might actually write it. So I never had a contract to write this one. This was like the thing that I went back to that was for me, that was fun, that I loved. Um, but it, 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 you know, it's, I didn't have the time pressure. Um, so I did other things in the middle. And then honestly, uh, this is one of these COVID books where it gave me the time to sit down and um, you know, I feel like even though we weren't allowed to travel, I feel like I, I totally traveled, I was, I was very much, uh, <laughs> there's 
there's two riches now. Anyway, um, I felt like in last summer, I felt like I was completely in 1984 Los Angeles. I felt like I traveled there in a way that um, I couldn't have done if I'd gotten on an airplane. So that's why it actually got done. That's great. Uh, and uh, are you working on another book these days? I am not working on a book right now. Um, although people have said they want another book with this, which is like, oh my gosh, can I fathom this? It'd be kind of fun though. Um, but I am working on this cool thing where, uh, you know, as Gabby mentioned, Barb earlier, uh, she's my buddy and creative collaborator, and she's always working on something. And she's got me working on an augmented reality script with a co-writer, uh, Janet Romero. And so I'm, I'm working on writing an app um, that's based on the how to get a girl pregnant. That would be like a fertility app that, you know, like women, women or men could get uh, while they're trying to uh, um, make a baby. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. It's pretty fun. It's kind of mind blowing. There, there was a question uh, much earlier on in the chat and uh, it's sort of related to, to the idea of writing. And, and the question was around, do you find it uh, uh, easier to write for young people than adults or vice versa? Oh, um, I mean, I guess, I guess in some ways it's a bit harder to write for young. I, I've often written for young people. So, uh, you know, um, I, I am kind of drawn to that, but I, I think it is a bit harder in that uh, you can be out of touch, you know, forgetting how people sound or, you know, what's interesting to them. And I do think um, it's very been very, very helpful to me to have uh, my kid in my life and watching uh, her and her friends um, on their adventures and what they value and what they're interested in, um, to have that always like in my, in my knowledge. And if I didn't have that, you know, like I think if you're writing for that age, you probably need to find kids to like hang out with because um, maybe you forget. Whereas the adult stuff is, you know, you're an adult, so you know what's going on. Uh, there's a question here from uh, Nancy. Uh, can you speak more about not wanting to write anything that would be banned? Um, and is asking because books do get banned that tackle tricky issues and we need, need those books to further conversations. Yeah, even as I said that, I thought, oh, I mean, it's kind of exciting to be banned. Oh, you know what? Actually, my my picture book, Are You a Boy or a Girl? It ended up on on like a full page ad of the National Post saying this was this was a horrible book for children. I don't know, a few years ago. And I thought, oh, that's almost like being banned. I thought I, my book became a celebrity, you know, by being banned in a way. But I, I, I mean, it's terrible. But at the same time, you're like, wow, what notoriety. That's amazing. So, I mean, and that was just about asking about gender. And it's a pretty sweet book. So, I, you know, this is what I want to say. Like, I'd, of course, I don't want to be banned. Um, and I especially don't think I should be banned for questioning gender because especially with all the backlash right now, you know, um, um, I don't want to be banned for having kids think about being non-binary or trans or, you know, questioning gender. Um, but, well, I guess what I mean is, you know, some of those stories like that my grandma told um, and that I could have told could not be in a kid's book because um, they're, they're too awful, <laughs> to be honest. So you just, you can't give it to a kid to read. And, you know, like violence or like sexual violence or, um, yeah, tragedy in a way. So, I mean, um, that's what I, like, you, you know, I had to be careful to think about what uh, would be too upsetting uh, to put in a book for an eight-year-old or a 12-year-old, you know. I say eight and up, so you can be any age and read this, you know, I mean, after eight. So, um, so I didn't put those stories in. And so I guess maybe banned isn't the right word, but maybe just too upsetting, you know. That's great. And a question from Christopher Rooney. Um, in what ways did, uh, did you change through the telling of this story? Ooh. Hi, Christopher. <laughs> 
why you ask me the hard questions? Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I don't like, I feel like life and story, you know how I said I had to be kind of older to write this book because I had to have a few more experiences, but like, so I don't know, some of it was um, the writing and some of it was the life together, but you know, like the scene that I read um, uh, about like your body being whatever you, you believe it to be, you know, whatever gender, whatever identity you believe it to be. I don't think I knew that until I lived it. And and then writing it out just makes me kind of kind of happy, you know? Um, so I feel that that helped me be more accepting of myself. Um, and actually some of the idea of that came from a good friend, um, uh, Herschel Russell, that I was also a trans activist who just really, you know, kind of taught me about uh, accepting whatever you got and and it can mean whatever you want it to mean i thought wow that's cool that i want that so and i hope that that idea is in the book as well so thinking about that um that idea uh it goes hand in hand kind of with um a question from katarina cook which was you know did did the experience of reading bedtime stories with your kid change how you thought about your own book um, yeah. <laughs> hey, Katie, thanks for the question. Um, I mean, for sure, you know, when you say when the question was earlier about a writing for this age, um, for sure, it, 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 I, I mean, when, when you're reading every night to your kid, you want good literature too, right? You know, uh, Martha, you said like, you think parents will like this too. And I hope so, you know, um, because when you're reading there with your kid, you want a good book, you know, <laughs> You know, and I love the, you know, the smart books, you know, like um, said Dana Simpson has Phoebe and her unicorn, which is the opposite of a, like, a, I don't know, a, a, I don't know, it's very sarcastic and very adult. At, at the same time, it's this unicorn book. Um, and I just, oh my God, this is brilliant, you know? Like, I really, you know, appreciated any of the authors who really cared about, you know, um, humor and ambiguity and I don't know problem solving intellectual game all of that stuff you you really get a sense of what you like and actually I mean I know it's a big book and um, it's not nearly as in depth as mine is but you know Diary of a Wimpy Kid I mean like for sure when I read that I thought this guy is the same age as me I don't know who he is but I thought he absolutely is I wikipedia him he's 1971 exact same age and like, he's got the heavy metal older brother. And I was like, oh my God, this is my, this, yes, this is exactly right. You know? So of course he's, you know, he's like more simple uh, games, but he, he's very funny and, um, and he really brings that time alive. And so uh, it totally influenced me. Yeah. Um, so a, a question from Gianna and, and you, you, did talk about this and they're asking about um, anything that you have, you know, that you're working on for the future. And I'm going to elaborate and just say, is there any other ideas around children's books that you're thinking about um, talking about or writing about in the future? Um, I mean, I, I, okay. One of the reasons I also want to write a middle grade book is because I knew at a certain point there were some queer picture books and some YA books. Of course, there need to be a lot more because we need a lot more stories, but there was hardly any for middle grade. And so I was like, I want to try that. Um, and so I do, I do really have this one in my head that's a YA book that I would like to write. And maybe I will, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, like, I've been so happy about this middle grade age and realizing that this is a place that, I mean, if anybody's writing out there, uh, people are telling me like they need middle grade books. They need middle grade books that are queer, that are intersectional, that aren't, you know, it's like a dearth in them. And they're, and like a bunch of people even in New York called me, thank you for writing this, but we don't have any middle grade books that do this stuff. So it, you know, like YA is very popular right now. So maybe I should put that on the back burner, wait till it gets less popular and try for another book at this age. 
Okay, and so we have uh, one here from Christine Cho, and um, I haven't finished the book yet, uh, they say, but is, um, is there potential for more books in a series um, following Alex and Wolf's stories together or separately? Uh, you know what, as soon as a couple of people read it, they told me there has to be another book. So I'm like, oh. so I put so much of myself Pressure. in this one. Like, I don't know, but I think they're, I think they're probably right. So, but this year I just want to try to uh, get it out to the world as much as possible. Like, I think this, this book might really travel um, in a way that, that um, my, my others have been really great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but like I said, there's this dearth of uh, middle grade books. So uh, it's kind of, I mean, the Globe and Mail reviewed it. I was like, going to go for a much smaller paper. Like, could, would anybody review my book? And it's like the American Library Association, they're taking it places. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I have a lot of work this year just on that. Oh, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Martha. Uh oh, you lost your ears. <laughs> oh no, I can't hear you. <laughs> anyway, Gabby, did you want to step in here? Um, did you have any? Can I say? Um, I'm just so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that I got to do the book. Um, and a lot of the stories actually reading too, I, I, I um, want to share too that I think, yeah, no matter where you are, because I was born in South America and a lot of it, what you were talking about is it was exactly the same. So most of my friends were boys and, and in South America, there's a lot of lice. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone, all the kids get shaved. So you had, we were. We're always, I was always in a group with boys, girls, you know, and we're all half naked, so our heads shaved. So <laughs> it, it, yeah, there was, it never it occurred to me that I would be different than, than a boy. Do you know what I mean? It, it was just all seamless, quite seamless until I would say grade. So I pro was probably maybe, yeah, maybe that age, so 12, 13. Uh, they, then they start seeing the differences coming. So um, like my friends started shaving their legs. So that was a big deal. <laughs> so I didn't know that I had to shave my legs. Yeah, I didn't know that. Either. Somebody pointed yeah. that out to me at some point. Yeah. I, that was one of the only advice from my grandma on the gender thing. She said, if you want a man, you better shave your legs. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of man? <laughs> yeah. can, can you hear me, can, can can you you hear me now? now? Yeah, yeah. Who, people are people are, are requesting that you read a little bit more before we wrap it up. Do you have anything prepared that you could read? Okay, hold on. You're on echo, just so you know. You're echoing. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I don't know why. Am I echoing still? Yeah, your audio might be going through two signals rather than just one. Maybe. Right now, am I echoing? No, nope. you're good. Great. OK, sorry, folks. These are the disadvantages to be doing a show in your underwears in the privacy of your own home, launching a great book. Sometimes we will have echo, but uh, as long as we can hear Carleen. Um, yeah, and I was, I was just looking. I don't know why I didn't have this ready. Um, Oh, I have this one from my grandma that talks about the Chicano movement. So the other thing this book does is it tells you a bit of the history of the Chicano movement in Los Angeles. And I think it, you know, um, as all kind of uh, 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 anti-colonial struggles uh, happen around the world, um, this is 
uh, this is the one in LA. This is one of the ones in LA. Uh, let me see. So I say, uh, oh, and the other thing is, I know we said we don't want to keep you till eight. So, you know, it's okay if you're, if you want to drift off and not be for this after party kind of era, but um, so <laughs> feel free. It's okay. It's okay. But I'll read this for the people that, that want to. Okay. So my grandma, who was always forgetting everything, she we go on the, I start asking, or I don't, I, Alex starts asking her about the Chicano movement. I say, what's a Chicano movement, I ask. Oh, she gasps. I forgot to tell you about the Chicano movement? That's terrible. I'm forgetting too many things, mija. Don't worry, Nana. I reach to hold her hand. I remember most of your stories. So that means we've got them safe in both of our heads. She smiles. You're a good kid. I get embarrassed when grown-ups compliment me, so I change the subject as fast as possible. What about the Chicano movement, Nana? Oh yeah, she takes a sip of her tea, turns down the volume on the TV and begins. Mira, way back in the 1840s when the gringos stole a bunch of Mexico, they made a whole lot of promises to us. They said we would keep our liberty and property rights, but they didn't follow their own rules. Like how? You know Dodger Stadium, right? Yeah, of course, I say, I answer. I love Dodger Stadium. Well, that used to be Chavez Ravine, which was stolen from Mexican Americans. She shakes her head sadly. Your grandpa was so mad about that, he resigned from his job with the city. That's actually true. It's a true moment. I... Wow, I said, I didn't know that. And Rosemead is full of Mexican kids. But how much Spanish have you learned at your school so far? She asked. None, Nana, I admit. I've only learned a few words from you. We had a right to our language, but they don't give us a chance to learn it. She sounds angry now. That's true. I feel sheepish. I wish I knew Spanish better so my nana wouldn't have to be so upset. Bueno, she resumes. We started getting really mad that the gringos weren't keeping their promises and also that they could be really mean to us saying racist words and even beating us up sometimes, kicking us out of school, not paying us enough at work, deporting us, a thousand kinds of awful things. I lower my head. I feel kind of ashamed of the story she's telling. Even though I'm part Mexican, I'm also quite a bit American. It's like one part of my body was mean to the other. She sees my head down and says, don't worry, mija, we're just getting to the good stuff. There's good stuff, I ask. About 20 years ago, a whole bunch of Mexican Americans started fighting back marching on the streets, striking in the fields, and demanding better schools and jobs and all the rights we deserve. Some of the ones who were fighting for justice even wore uniforms and called themselves the Brown Berets. In East LA, they put together free health clinics for Chicanos, and one of the leaders, Gloria Arellanes, graduated from El Monte High. Did anyone from Rosemead ever do anything? Well, see, my nana nods proudly, Vicky Carr. The smoothest Chicana voice on the radio. She's ours. <laughs> She's <laughs> ours. <laughs> Vicky Carr. All men who were cheating on their wives <laughs> listen to Vicky Carr, my mother used to say. <laughs> That's a great story. That's got to be in the next book. Yeah, we knew it was a Cardona house. It was, we knew the Cardona house. And of course, we also knew that if you wanted to make it, you know, back then, you had to change your name. Richie Valens, Richie Valenzuela, Vicky Carr, Vicky Cardona. That was the thing. Yeah. But, but we you're, Car you're Carleen Pen Pendleton. Yeah, yeah, it sounds very English. Yeah, like, a, like an upscale uh, department store. It's Miss a lot of Pendleton. <laughs> there's some Pendleton. I noticed there's some Pendletons in, in the house tonight from Iowa and California. Hello, Pendleton. Pendleton. <laughs> but you keep the Jimenez. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, honey, I think uh, it is time I think to so. go. If anybody else has a question, now I, I gotta repeat that the books are available from another story bookshop in Toronto. They have lots of copies. If you want Miss Pendleton Jimenez to sign the book, just let her know in her website. And um, if you want to have all of the details about the book, are on her website. I think at the beginning we were kind of like a. We did, but we started the, the thing with the idea and give you your credits and it's tormenting me. I didn't say about the credits of this woman, you know, like uh, 
you have great credits, Carolina. Ka okay, she's from Los Angeles, California. Ah, it's okay. And she's <laughs> fully. She's currently a full professor in the School of Education at Trent University, and uh, you can read in her website the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for uh, assisting in the, and, and taking the time to participate. It is really encouraging to see so many people interested in reading. I tell you, I do shows on Zoom. Not so many people. We have to we have to beg for people to come to the shows. But uh, what is your website? www. Carlinepj.com. Oh, um, and um, an arsenal, uh, no, sorry, and um, another story uh, bookshop, another story.ca, I think is uh, that is there, and they have it set up of if you want me to sign it, and I know they have a lot of books, if you want one like that, then I'm going to go in on Thursday and sign a whole bunch of them, and I'd be happy to. And, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Carlin, for giving me the friend. honor. The honor to to uh, launch your book with you. Hi, nice to meet you, Gabby. Thank you, nice and, to meet you as well. Uh, nice to meet you, and thank you everybody in the audience for taking the time to come buy the book. I guarantee you that you will love it. Thank you very much. Adios. Buenas thank noches. You. Gracias. Hi. Gracias. Gracias. Who goes? Who <laughs> says? Who hangs up first? I don't you. know. I'm gonna save the chat first. That's what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna lose it. Um there. Have a good night. Good night, good night, Gabby. I'm so glad. Buenas noches. Bye Gabby. So do you have a website too, Gabby, where people Bye, can see your work? Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Okay. Buenas I'll, noches. I'll, I'll I'll stop recording.